we're all guilty of scoffing at horror movie characters, boasting from the comfort of our couches how we'd be able to outsmart the villains. But when push comes to shove, even the characters who've been up against them for a few sequels now miserably fail. Today, we'll show you how to outsmart the Jigsaw Killer's traps from the first Saw movie. First, we have the Reverse Bear Trap. The Reverse Bear Trap is perhaps the easiest jigsaw contraption to cheat, which explains why it's only managed to claim one victim despite its recurrent appearance in the franchise. Here's a refresher that the RBT is essentially a bear trap whose jaws snap open instead of snapping shut like a regular one, hence the name. The trap, which is padlocked to a person's head, moreover, comes with a two-minute timer. Now, if we were in Jigsaw's shoes, we'd call it a day at that, but he expects its victim, which would be you in this case and Amanda Young in the film, to retrieve the key to it from a dead person's bowels. That'd be a breeze, for instance, if the timer didn't go off as soon as you left the chair that you were bound to. We don't know about you, but our patience with this guy has already worn thin. But believe it or not, in the case of this trap, impatience is what'll get you killed. Let us explain why. So, as we mentioned before, the timer goes off only if you bolt out of the chair that you're bound to. That's to say, the tripwire that sets it off is attached somewhere on the chair. If you were smart and patient, you'd eventually come to that conclusion because one examination of the trap would reveal that it was mechanical and not technological or remote controlled. With that information at hand, you'd simply have to detach the wire, ridding yourself of the timer. With the timer out of the way, you could then retrieve the key and set yourself free. As far as the argument of Amanda's cellmate being alive goes, she didn't initially know that he was alive, did she? Also, this is a horror film. It's every man for himself. Speaking of men, Detective Hoffman was able to rid himself of the trap in one of the later Saw films by placing it between two metal bars. But considering that he lost half of his jaw in the process, we'd recommend that you stick to the first plan. Next is the flammable jelly. Although this trap seems inescapable, there's a pretty easy, but awfully disgusting, way of going around its many obstacles. But before we can get into that, here's your reminder that A, you've been injected with a slow-killing poison, B, your body's covered in flammable substance, and C, because Jigsaw doesn't know when to quit, there are shards of glass on the floor. Yep, and if that wasn't enough, the antidote to the poison is in a safe with a candle on top of it. No, you can't blow it out. It's, as a matter of fact, going to be your only light source as you try to find the safe's code, which our man Jiggy was kind enough to paint on the walls, among only about a thousand others. Now here's your first loophole. Jigsaw hasn't cut off your tongue. Yes, you got it. You need to lick some of that substance off. Not off your entire body, of course, just your hands and arms. Because, come on, no matter how slow, that poison isn't going to wait for you to be squeaky clean before it takes you out. Jokes aside, once you've successfully licked it off, you need to lift the candle in such a way that the flame is directed away from you. Perhaps hold it at arm's length away from your body? Since Jigsaw went easy on you by painting the numbers really large, there's actually no need to stick your face close to the flames to read them, as Mark did. As for the second loophole, you need to climb on top of the safe and use it to get around the walls. Yes, we checked, the safe's got wheels. With the candle and the shards sorted, the only thing that remains are the codes. For those, fans recommended that either you put in a bunch of random numbers till you get the right one, or try, as one fan pointed out, looking for the number that stands out or has been written a little differently. The numbers 130722, for instance. Up next, the razor wire maze. Another trap that would have been fairly easy to escape from if the person involved had not panicked is the razor wire cage. But Paul Leahy decided to have a go at the wires instead of inspecting them first. As insane as it sounds, Jigsaw doesn't always intend for his victims to die, and therefore he didn't make his cage fail safe. Yes, there were a very few wires at ground level, and Leahy would have noticed that if he had kept his head about him. So, instead of following in Leahy's footsteps, entering the maze like a WWE cage, all you have to do is lie down on your stomach. That should be easy, seeing that he left the shards out this time. Anywho, after getting down on the ground, just crawl towards any possible openings or loose wires and voila, you're free. This technique would guarantee none of your vitals get damaged and also spare the cops a sight of your stomach juices, a sight they couldn't avoid with Leahy, who was found entangled and oozing over the wires. However, before you get too enthusiastic about explaining this to your friends, there's another small step we need you to keep in mind. You'll have to remove your underwear and use it as a protective glove to move the wires around. Additionally, you might have to pull it down on your neck at some point to ensure that any stray wires don't slice your jugular open while you're making your grand escape. Now, we have Zepp Hindle's test. If you go into the details of Hindle's test, the whole movie starts to come crashing down like a house of cards. To help jog your memory, Zepp was asked to hold Dr. Gordon's family hostage in exchange for the antidote to the slow-acting poison in his body. Now, there isn't just one reason for this trap being completely bogus. Firstly, why didn't he go to a hospital for the antidote instead? Jigsaw, aka John Kramer, 
Kramer, as we find out later, is stuck in the room with Adam and Gordon, and even if we consider the possibility of Hindle being taken out by someone else if he were to abandon the game, let's not forget that he had a gun on him, giving him a fair chance of getting away from any potential attackers. Secondly, Hindle was associated with the world of medicine. Even if he was a simple orderly, he would know how to flush the poison out, and if he didn't, he could have always headed to the hospital for the cure. The people at the hospital would have immediately concluded that it was thallium poisoning and admitted him, removing him to boot from the threat of an assault from Jigsaw or one of his assistants. How do we know it was thallium, and not some deadly poison, you say? Well, Kramer was an engineer and a puppeteer, not a medical expert. Thallium is a quite popular slow-acting poison, so that also helped connect the dots as well. Nevertheless, this line of thought pokes a huge hole in the film's plot, because with nobody holding Gordon's family hostage, he doesn't have anything to drive him to Adam's murder, botching the entire game. Anyway, let's not digress and unpack their trap as well. And lastly, how to defeat the bathroom. While the film has a non-linear narrative and jumps around a lot, most of its action takes place in the bathroom. Dr. Gordon and Adam, as you might remember, are chained to the opposite ends of it, with a dead body, Jigsaw in disguise, lying in the center. Even though, as the film's main plotline, the trap should have seemed a little more difficult, it really isn't. Before any of the franchise's fans come at us with the bear trap, hear us out. The action is taking place in a bathroom that looks like it's as old as time itself. How did they not think of cutting the pipes off instead of the chains when they first found the saws? The pipes are relatively older and much more likely to give way. Now, we agree that the chains can administer electric shocks, but the plot didn't hint at the same for the pipes. Another thing that gets our goats and makes the trap really easy to beat is the fact that there's no need to hack one's whole foot off. Even removing a little bit of flesh will do the job, and the blood will further help the chains slide off easily. Horror critics take notes. We mean, they could have easily done this and then escaped by pushing the door down with their body weights combined. And before you ask us about Jigsaw coming at them, they had a gun on them for crying out loud. Just shoot the guy. All things considered, these were the few traps that were easily navigable. The ones we've left out, like the drill tear for example, we'd rather not boast about escaping. And you shouldn't either. That's a wrap for this video. How do you think Jigsaw would punish you? Which one of these traps would you have the most trouble with? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.